Hey everyone, and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. In the last episode, we looked at wood filler to see if wood filler is a good material to use to fill in cracks on a 3D printed part. And today, I'm gonna to be playing around with this. This is two-in-one primer. It is primer that is a filler and it's sandable. So it's a very thick primer that I'm going to see if that would be good to use to fill in all of the layers and help hide the layers of the 3D printed parts. So if we take a look at the 3D print, you can see uh, all of these little tiny lines that are each individual layer of this 3D print. Now normally when you uh, paint over this, normal top coat is very thin and you can see these layers underneath. However, in order to get that to work, you would have to sand this entire helmet, all of the plastic to get rid of that, uh, that layers. So in order to help with that top coat, you would normally have to sand the entire helmet. Every square inch of uh, 3D print would have to be sanded down to get rid of those layers. That is very time consuming. That uh, creates a ton of dust that you probably don't want to breathe, especially if it's ABS. Uh, and it can be really tough to sand this really smooth. So I'm going to try this filler primer and see if that would help hide most of the layers. So I only have to sand, I'd still have to sand the entire helmet, but uh, primer is so much easier to sand than 3D printed material. So I'm hoping that this would leave a good enough surface so I can just give a very light sanding and continue on to a top coat. So that is what we're gonna try to do today, is try out this filler primer. Let's get to it. So first I wanna take some video of how it is before. So if we look at the side of the helmet, you can see all of the individual layers. And as I move up, you can especially see uh, on this top crown area just how pronounced those uh, 3D printed layers can be. Because these are 300 micron layers. These are very thick, so they are very noticeable. So this is kind of the before image. And I'll take the same shots afterwards to see how it turns out. And here's how the wood filler looks before the paints. You can see that it's actually pretty smooth. Uh, but we're also going to test out to see if the wood filler absorbs paint differently than the 3D prints and how many layers of this primer I'd have to put over in order for you to not be able to tell that there's a difference between this material and this material. Okay, so the first light coat has been put on, and so far I really don't see a difference, but this is going to take a few more coats, uh, so I'm not too surprised at the moment. You can see that it's starting to fill in the layers, uh, but with one coat the difference isn't very noticeable, and you can actually see a lot of the imperfections now. So up here you can see that uh, there's a layer split right up here that's uh, very noticeable after the first coat of primer, but I'm sure that sanding will take that down no problem. So it's time to try a few more coats. I'm gonna let this one dry. Get out of there. I'm gonna let this one dry and then I'm gonna put on a couple more coats and then we can see if it starts to be sandable. So one concern that was raised with using wood filler on a 3D printed part is how, uh, how it paints. Um, and if you can tell that the wood filler is different from the 3D prints. So far it looks like this isn't acting too differently from the 3D printed part gonna take some sanding to get perfectly smooth but it doesn't seem like the wood filler is absorbing the paints any quicker than the 3d prints so that looks good okay so I just finished the third coat and this can is empty so one can of this filler primer can get me three coats of paints on this giant helmet which I guess is okay there's a there's a lot of surface area on this helmet and if we go in for a close-up we can see how well that paint worked you can see that it actually works surprisingly well with three coats, so I have not yet sanded any of this. Uh, and you can see that it, it covered up some of the cracks that were there. There's still some cracks in the actual layers, 
that this did not fill. So I was hoping, so if we go up here, I was hoping that the filler primer would fill in some of these very, very small gaps. Uh, so I purposely did not put wood filler or any ABS slurry in these to see how the filler primer would work. And it doesn't seem to fill in those cracks, but we'll see how it is after I sand it. Uh, and the primer makes any flaws much more apparent. So just like any paint. So if we go up here, you can see that I had this layer splits and I wanted to see what the filler primer would do with that layer splits and it didn't fill it in. It just made it much, much more obvious like any paint's going to do. Uh, so we'll see how that cleans up after sanding as well. So this paint is going to take a couple hours to dry and once it does, I can come over and start sanding it and see if any of these layers that will still look like layers um, can be sanded out, whether that's a layers caused by the 3D printed material itself or rather the, uh, the primer sitting on top of those layers. If it's the primer, it should be really easy to sand out. So that's the next step is to wait for all of this to dry and then we'll see how sandable this sandable filler primer actually is. Okay, so an hour later and I have half the helmet sanded. So I've only gone and sanded this half so I can compare it with the unsanded half on this side. But the first thing I'd like to say is that this primer, the filler primer, it really gums up your sandpaper. I used a lot of sandpaper uh, only for half the helmets. So if you're dry sanding this primer, be prepared to use a lot of sandpaper. Uh, it can be wet sanded, but I have not done that yet. But let's take a look at how the sanding actually went. So the first thing I'd like to point out is the unsanded side so we know what to look for. So if we zoom in to the unsanded side, you can see not only are there uh, layers, so horizontal lines showing each of in the individual layers of the 3D prints, but there are also vertical lines. So you can notice all of these vertical lines going down the entirety of the helmets. So those lines are due to uh, the way 3D printers work is if you have a curve, it doesn't actually print a true curve. It breaks that curve up into a bunch of really tiny, uh, short, straight line segments. So it's a bunch of straight lines as it goes around that curve. So that's what these lines show is how, uh, how the individual lines that make up this curve were actually 3D printed. And you can see it much more clearly up here as well. Uh, that's something that I did not notice until I put the primer on it. So the primer hid the horizontal lines just enough so that you can start seeing those vertical lines uh, going across the helmet. And if we take a look at this side that has been sanded, you can see that both the horizontal lines and the vertical lines are greatly diminished. So if we take a look at the front, you can see that the sanding really makes it smooth. This filler primer actually did a pretty good job of uh, filling in those lines and when you sanded it down there was enough material to remove the primer and not really hit the 3D prints. There's a couple areas in which I hit the actual uh, plastic itself up here and a little bit over here uh, that I'm going to have to go through. So I'll probably need at least another coat of primer uh, to fill in these tiny little imperfections that are left. Uh, but for the most part actually it, it sands pretty well. Like I said, it does use a lot of sandpaper, so be prepared to uh, go through a lot when you're sanding this. But, on the most part, I'm actually really, really happy with the way that it's turning out. You can see that there's still some vertical lines, especially here where it actually hits the, the plastic itself. You can really see those vertical lines. But up here, I wasn't able to get as smooth of a surface as I was hoping for. So that's going to take uh, some more sandpaper to really start getting the, the details here. Um, but overall, I think that this filler primer is actually working out really, really well. And one more area to look at is this front section here. So if I zoom into the side, you can really see the, uh, the layers on the side over here. And the, the corner is also raised because the 3D printer has to move over, stop, and then uh, move across the front. And 
because it has to stop and change directions, a little bit more plastic gets extruded at the corners. So when we go on this side, you can see that in order to get a nice smooth surface, you're going to have to break through that, uh, that corner bits and really uh, get into that plastic in order to reach the primer of the straight sections here. And one last thing to talk about is the wood filler with the primer. So this area back here was covered in wood filler, and you can't really tell a difference, especially since it's been sanded. Uh, so that's not really a concern, is having the wood filler act differently and absorb more paint than the plastic itself. And if we go back over to the big area, so this area right here, this entire area, is nothing but wood filler and you can't really tell a difference. You can tell over here just because it hasn't been blended yet, uh, but over here where it was blended, you can't really tell a difference. And this side hasn't been sanded at all, uh, so even without sanding, the, the blending works really well. So that is not a concern. So feel free to use wood filler as uh, filler for your 3D prints, and then just paint over it like you would normal 3D prints. So, thank you guys for joining me trying out filler primer and seeing if it actually does hide the layer height and make it easier to finish a 3D print. I think it turned out perfectly. So thank you guys for watching. Please like the video if you liked the video, and be sure to subscribe to see more projects coming on the way. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching Hoffman Engineering.